You want your YouTube videos to sound cinematic? Well, I'm gonna walk you through my exact mastering and audio mixing process using Adobe Premiere and Adobe Audition. Let's dive into it. So YouTube doesn't tell you this, but audio matters way more than you think. As per a lot of your requests out there, I'm gonna show you how I mix and master my videos for YouTube in Adobe Premiere and Audition. All right, so I'm in Premiere Pro and I have my sequence fully edited here, as you can see. And I have my VO track, which is my track one, and I have my music track, which is track two. So I'm gonna to go to edit, edit in Adobe Audition, and then I'll select sequence. And this is gonna bring my whole sequence into Adobe Audition. All right, so you're deep into editing, trying to polish that final cut, but then you realize you missed an hour long meeting that you have to catch up on replaying, scrubbing, jotting down notes, it's a time sink. That's why I started using Noda. It handles the messy parts, real-time transcription with 98% accuracy and instant AI summaries, so I could actually focus on creating. And in 30 seconds, that hour-long meeting is condensed into a concise, actionable list. No more replaying meetings, no more wasted time, just pure, uninterrupted creativity. That's what you want, right? And if you're working with international clients, Noda's got you covered with 58 plus languages for transcription in real-time translations. Plus, this feature is pretty cool. With the AI chat, you could quickly find the exact info you need from your recordings, no more hunting through hours of footage. You do that enough with your edits. So whether you're a video editor, consultant, or podcaster, Noda keeps you focused on what matters, creating. Are you ready to maximize the value of every conversation? Then check out Noda at Noda.ai and check the link below for 10% off. And this is gonna bring my whole sequence into Adobe Audition. Since I have a few cuts here, I'm gonna select my whole voiceover. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on Merge Clips. This is all gonna make it into one clip. And then I'm gonna double click on that and this is gonna bring me into the editor for this specific clip. And as you can see here, if you take a listen, what if you could make floating text, sci-fi scenery, See, my intro is obviously much louder than a screen capture portion. I'm gonna do select all, and I'm gonna go to effects, amplitude, and compression, and I'm gonna go to single band compressor. And under presets, I'm gonna go to voiceover. I'm gonna keep all these presets as the default, and I'm gonna click apply. So what that does is it basically just levels out the whole entire voiceover. Okay, so now if I zoom in here quite a bit, I could see some parts of the waveform that basically is when I take a breath. So right here where you kind of see it go up and down, that's me taking a breath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna do Command U and that's gonna clean up the selection. I could also just lower the decibels to zero as well. So what I usually do is I go through my whole voiceover and I remove any clicks, any different breaths. Another thing you could do is if you find a click like this, pretty annoying, huh? One way to fix that is if you go over to diagnostics and I do de-clicker and hit scan, it's gonna search for all of those specific clicks. I'll click repair all. Yeah, let's take a listen. Better, but not perfect. So I'll just continue to go through this and do command U and clean it all up as best I can. The next thing that I usually do is I'll select it again and I'll go to favorites normalized to a negative three decibels. And this is just gonna give it a little bit more boost. I could raise it up or lower it from there. Okay, so now that I have my audio in a pretty good place, the last thing that I'm gonna do to my voiceover, I'm gonna go to effects, and I'm gonna go to filter and EQ, and I'll go to parametric equalizer. And then from here under my preset, I'm gonna go to vocal enhancer, and then I'll click apply. And this is just gonna make the voiceover sound a little bit more crisp and full, and I'll show you the before and after right here. That's the power of the 3D camera tracker effect in After Effects. That's the power of the 3D camera tracker effect in After Effects. Okay, so now that my voiceover is in a good spot, I'll go back to my multi-track, and from here I'm gonna balance my music with my voiceover. If I click on the effects button, this is gonna bring up the effects panel. So if we take a quick listen to this. First one we're gonna break down, you've probably seen everyone. Obviously the music is kind of overpowering the voiceover, which is what we don't want. So. What I'm gonna do is, music track, I usually go to about negative 28 to negative 32 decibels. You wanna be able to hear the voice and also hear a little bit of the music. Once I have my music levels set, what I have to do is I have to do some ducking. So there's some easy preset that kinda of does it for you. So if I go to my music track and in my effects, I'm gonna do the drop down right here and I'm gonna to go to amplitude and compression. 
Dynamics Processing. And then the preset here, I'm gonna select the soft limit, negative 24 decibels. And while I have that, I'm gonna go over to my main voiceover track in the sends arrow here. I'm gonna go to this drop down and I'm gonna go to side chain. And this is gonna piggyback off of the effect that I just added onto the music track. And I'll go to create. And this is gonna piggyback over the dynamics processing effect. This is going to balance my voiceover with the music. So anytime that the voiceover is at a blank spot where I'm not talking, the music is gonna amp up a little bit. And once the voiceover picks back up, the music will lower. So it does it very smoothly where you almost don't even notice it. If I just solo the music level and you listen to it, you could hear the ups and downs of the music levels. So now that combined with my voiceover, the first one we're gonna break down, you've probably seen everywhere. Floating 3D text immersed in your scene. So from here, once I have my voiceover and my music track balanced, I could save this project and then I can go into export, export to Premiere Pro. And then what I usually do is I do mix down session to a stereo file. If you wanna export each track as a stem so you could actually adjust it in Premiere, you can but I just usually finish everything in Adobe Audition and I save it and then I'll make sure it's a stereo file and I'll click export. And then from here, it'll jump back over to Premiere and then it'll just add a new audio track. I'll click okay. And then right down here, this is the whole mastered track that I just created. So all I have to do is in Premiere is solo that and here's my voiceover. And if I ever wanna go back and edit it, all I have to do is right click on this and click edit original, and it'll jump right back into the Adobe Audition project that I was working on. Clean visuals are always great, but when you have great sound, that's what keeps people watching. Let me know in the comments what you learned today or what you'd like to learn, and thanks for watching.